let's turn now to one of the names that helped pa power the gains we saw in the S&P today, Tesla. That stock leading uh, the average up 2% today on a report that electric vehicle company is planning to revamp its Model Y version from a Shanghai plant starting in the middle of 2024. Let's bring in Roth Capital Senior Research Analyst Craig Irwin. Craig, it it's great to have you on. You've been bearish on Tesla for like ever. I mean, I feel like it's been years that I've spoken to and you've been bearish on Tesla. And yet, and yet the stock has performed really well, despite whatever you want to say about the fundamentals. Why are you still bearish here? So I'm bearish because I see it as egregiously overvalued, right? We look at um, Toyota as a benchmark, right? Toyota's the world's largest auto producer, um, about 9 million cars a year. There's nothing Tesla has that Toyota does not. Um, why should it trade at a large multiple to Toyota? You know, if it's going to tell a fraction of the vehicles, if, you know, maybe the technology premium, the leadership in EVs, Give it a similar valuation. And that's really what we do with our $85 price target. So I'm not celebrated, though. I do need to clarify that. There are levers that they can pull, um, specifically the mini car in India. We've been waiting for them on both of these uh, really since 2019. Back actually when we were when we were last, I, I believe, really bullish on the stock. Um, but from here, you know, I just I see this one as a slow drip over the next couple of years. OK. So I guess what do you make then of the reports then today about about a revamp of its most popular model in one of its largest markets where I guess from which its factory sends out and exports uh, the most EVs to different parts of the world? Yeah, no, the Shanghai facility is, a, is the most important facility for Tesla. So um, it's necessary. All of their models are long in the tooth. People have been asking for updates of the the S, the X, the three for years and the Y, you know, is losing market share in China. It's no longer the leading EV in China, you know, so I think it's over. It's overdue, right? You know, some of these other updates are many years overdue. You know, everybody was looking forward to a new Roadster. You know, everybody's looking forward to the Cybertruck. Finally, we got a couple, right? You know, they're late. They're late. Um, and, uh, you know, competition's real. Competition in China is 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 overtaking them. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a tough 2024 for Tesla. OK. I mean, expanding even beyond Tesla on a day where we are also having reports that a Chinese EV maker, BYD, may be poised as soon as this quarter to overtake Tesla as the top EV maker and seller globally. Uh, what are your expectations for the EV market in 2024 when you do have a player in China that is aggressively subsidizing and making these new cars and exporting them to different parts of the world? And you do have Europe and the U.S. considering tariffs, and, and it sort of speaks to the geopolitical landscape as we talk about energy transformation. You nailed it. You absolutely nailed it. So. You know, Tesla's looking at a 4% growth rate um, for revenue for the fourth quarter. Um, that's due to pricing pressure. How on earth are we going to see acceleration to 13% in the first quarter? Um, EVs are real. They're here. They're inevitable. Thank you, Elon. Right? I'm a big fan of EVs. Um, Tesla's facing real competition during a period of economic weakness. So they're going to have more price cuts, and they're going to be more companies like BYD with super credible vehicles out there on the road. So, you know, EVs overall, I see as inevitable. Yes, this is going to be a painful year as far as price cuts and maybe growth not as not as strong as people would like to see in the market. Uh, but they're inevitable. They're here for this for the long haul. And I, I think, you know, the price cuts that we see over the course of 2024 are going to be really what creates the market. When EVs are fundamentally cheaper than ICE vehicles, they're going to be really compelling for consumers and they're going to be a much larger mix of the overall sales mix.